Hi, I borrowed this bear from Blendswap.com. Is uh, he has a Creative Commons license of CC0. I'm just going to demonstrate how to rig him. So I'm using the Avastar plugin for Blender, and I've opened up the bear file, and I've noticed that he's 122, nearly 123 meters tall. You see that when you look in the item tab. So I want him to be about 0.7 meters tall, which will help him fit in with the tiny community. So I'm going to select him with a left click and press S and scale him down by moving the mouse. And I'm watching the dimensions in that panel that I just showed. He's getting a bit too small to see, so I'm going to zoom in by scrolling the mouse. And I'm pressing shift to position him where I can see him better. So I can scale him down more now, and I can hold shift when, as I get close so that to, I can get him more accurate. So scroll in again, center. So I'll scale him down a bit more. Right now I'm close. I can hold shift and go more slowly. I can stop at point seven. We're going to go control A. All transforms. So now we need to add a second life skeleton. And we're going to add the Animesh skeleton because we add Avastar Animesh. It's more versatile. We can use the result as an, either as an avatar or as an Animesh. So I'm going to put the skeleton in object mode. and scale it down until the pelvis is where we want on the bear. Never mind about the rest of it, the pelvis is important. So we're looking at, at this bone here. I'm going to side view, which is three on the numpad. Just going to scale it up a bit more. I kind of want it to line up with the base of the tail. And that's okay now. Right, so the next stage is to go into Joint Edit Workflow. So I click the Avastar tab and then Joint Edit. Go to Options and turn on X-axis mirror. That'll make sure when you move one side, the other side uh, moves in a, to the corresponding position. And below Rig Display is Special Bone Groups. I'll click that and we'll make sure that Structure is enabled. You can see the difference there. If structure is not enabled, you won't be able to move the head of the hip bone or the collarbone. So leave that enabled. We also want to enable extra. And that allows us to see the toes and the skull. Okay, so what one is front view, numpad one. Select the whole of one leg by holding control and drawing with the right mouse around the bones we want to select and then GX that's about right so the hip will rotate from here that looks okay and then select by holding control and drawing again upper half GZ 
and we want to stop where this bone hits the bottom of the chest and that's about okay and then we'll deselect that bit of the chest and then carry on up GZ and we're going to stop where the top of the chest hits the neck the GZ hasn't got much of a neck but we'll sort that out after and let's make the arms kind of long enough to fit on the arm of the bear ah it's crossing over so what we do is we'll select this bone here and we go shift s cursor to selected and up here we'll change the cursor to from medium point to 3D cursor select the whole arm again and scale with S and move the mouse I'm kind of trying to estimate how it will be when the collarbone is bent down we can always change it again later right, so that's about right and this is a collarbone and we want we want the collarbone to be kind of about that long but with the tail of it ending at the point of rotation so I'm just going to select everything and move it to the right with GX Deselect this end of the collarbone and then GX. So there's your collarbone now. So and here's the, the rotation point which is kind of far enough out to stop the arm going into the belly when it rotates, maybe a little bit further. okay now we're going to go shift s again and cursor to selected so we're doing it on the tail end of the collarbone now select the whole arm and rotate with r and we're going to put the wrist bone here about the center of this arm that looks okay but what we're going to do is move the collarbone down a bit so selecting only the collarbone move it down so that it's it makes the bones go down the center of the arm all the way something like that a bit more okay now we've got the head so here's the bottom of the neck so we don't want to include that we'll just select the rest of it okay now i'm going to change back to the cursor back to medium point and scale turn to the side with three numpad scale keep the head bone here in line with the spine gy so it's g for grab if you want to undo g it's alt g if you want to undo rotation it's alt r so this is the skull bone so we're going to move that up to about here and that partially holds the name tag in combination with the pelvis so we want it a bit above the head and 
and then we're going to carry on moving the face bones into position which I'll do very fast so you don't get bored um, when you click a bone you can look here to see which has been selected and you would know roughly where to put it from that so left forehead and then front view is one move it out to the left GX but let's go a bit above the eyebrow because the eyebrows have their own bones so GZ that's okay right and then carry on moving the face bones as you want this is the ear and so on but I'll just explain that uh, the mouth bones we want the lower lips all these are lower lips to be in line with the lower lip so up a bit and we want to scale it so that the um, left and right bones are about here something like that and then bring it forward so turn to the side three and G Y so that would be correct for rigging and animating and then you just carry on moving the other bones into position like that and so on so I'll do that very fast now and uh, come back to you in a sec now I've just noticed the arms are a bit too far forward so I'm going to select all of the arms and the collar and move them back on Y straighten that a little and that looks okay so far so I've got the hips rotating there right, so we'll go to pose mode so we'll go to object mode and we'll do control a on the on the uh, skeleton control a all transforms and now we go to the Avastar tab scroll down to posing panel I've got too many tabs open here I'm just going to show you how to collapse so you would hold control and left click on one one of these side arrows and then left click it again and they all collapse so now we want the posing panel and pose mode and scroll down to this button here with joints so we need to click that to door the joints okay so now everything will move but the mesh is not yet bound to the skeleton so we're going to do that now so select the mesh select the skeleton go to binding and skinning panel oh it says scaled items i don't know how i've lost their scale but if we select it in the other direction so select the skeleton first and then the mesh 
these arrows become active so we can click each one to correct the scale and to correct the rotation. Now when we select both, we change copy from meshes if that's the default to automatic from bones. And then I'm going to untick smooth weights because it doesn't need smoothing at this stage. Now this is going to bind to visible bones if that's ticked. I think I'm going to tick it. But first I'm going to deselect the toes and the skull. So back to rig display, extra, untick extra. Okay. Right, so back to binding and skinning. Now we can bind to armature with only visible bones selected. Now we're going to test the binding. First of all, we can look in the vertex weight groups uh, over here to see if they've been generated, and they have. Now select the skeleton in pose mode. That is pose and animate up here workflow and rotate the leg with R and we notice that it's pushing in at the side there so we've got too much hip weight there we can sort that out in a, in a minute and rotate the arm and it's affecting the neck and it's pulling up the uh, chest so we sort that out. We need to re remove some arm weights from the chest. Now, make it easy. Make this posing easier first. Let's um, go to rig display and enable shape, and that gives us some shapes to find the bones we want to rotate more easily. So this is the head bone. And we can see that that's rotating the chest as well. We don't want that. So we've got that to sort out. So so that was R to rotate. Now Alt R to reset to default. And we've got the collar here. These are the collarbones. That's not too bad, but it's it's affecting the chest area too much. Right, let's put them into a sitting position. So this is the hip, the R. And that would be correct, but it's pulling the chest down, so we've got that to sort out. So I'll show you how to sort out some of this distortion and then speed it up while I sort out the rest. The dark arrow here on the right so I'll click that and then sort by name and not by hierarchy and that puts the opposite bones next to each other. Right, so we'll start with the hip. Select the mesh. M hip. Left. So if we look at it in weight paint mode. You can see that the spread is too far. So I need to remove everything above the hip level. I can leave the rest for now. I, I like to do this in edit mode. That's the top of the hip bone. So this is this is the where I want it to stop. So everything above that. I'm going to look in wireframe. Oh, sorry, X-ray. Or wireframe, but I prefer X-ray. Select everything above that level I showed you. And then M-Pip left, 
remove. And while we're here, M hip right remove. And then back to object mode, click that uh, hip again and rotate R. Oops, it's in an object mode. Pose mode. R. And that's all right. It's creasing there, but we can sort the creases out after. That's much better. Right, so let's look at another one. And particularly, the you get face bones spreading onto the chest as well. They they all need removing, but they take a long time to remove individually. So this is the shoulder. You can see it's pulling up the chest here. So we're going to select everything below where the shoulder would influence. So that's here downwards. And M shoulder left remove and right remove. Alt R. Right now I'm going to carry on. Sometimes it's sometimes it's hard to select the mesh after you've put it into X-ray mode. So just go back into the outliner, click Avatar, and the bear. Below that is the bear, I mean. Click the bear. Now you can go back into solid view. Right, so I'm going to carry on very fast, removing unnecessary weights. And I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay, that's done. And it's behaving well, so now we need to do some cleaning up. So we'll select the mesh. And we'll look in the item tab. And put the mesh in edit mode. And select a vertex. You see that some vertices have too many bones assigned to them, and we can have only four. So we can choose which four, or we can let Blender drop the lowest weights, which might not always be suitable, but you can add them back if it's not suitable. So what we do is we select the whole mesh in edit mode, or Go to Mesh, Weights, Limit Total, 
and that's dropped all the lowest weights and then they need to be normalized which means that the these four weights must add up to one because they will average out at one anyway but we want to see how it behaves at one so mesh weights normalize all and we change that to deform pose bones and untick lock active Back to object mode, we'll set, select the rig again and see how it's behaving now. In pose mode. So we've got a little bit of jaggies here. So that needs smoothing out, so we'll do that in a sec. Jaggies here. Jaggies there. And there on the stomach. Okay, so while it's like this, oh, and the tail, that's awful. We might need to add some more geometry to help us. If we now look in edit mode on the mesh, select it there again, in edit mode. You can see you've got a big gap here. So it will be helpful to have another two rows there. So while it's like that, press Control R. And we want to add two loops. So Control R, scroll the mouse so that there's two left click right click the right click confirms now it didn't go right across because we've got a triangle here so we might have to do it separately like that and then we can join the vertices so select that vertex that vertex and press j and so on Tail is pretty distorted, but we'll do some magic now. So, back to object mode for a minute. Pose it back down, so Alt R. So you can see these extra loops added here. You've got a bit of um, hardness in the lighting, so we can sort that out easily. So into object mode, right click the mesh and choose shade, shade smooth. That should fix it. Right, so now because you've, you've got some kind of rippling going on here in the lighting, so we're going to smooth these weights out. So we're going to select all of that and above. So all the new and above and below. And from the side, go to X-ray, select the tail as well. And then while we've got that selected, we'll go back into pose mode and pose that leg back so that you've got the jaggies. Go back into edit mode. This is a palaver, I know, but it's well worth doing. Right, so now we're going to smooth the, ver uh, the weights. So mesh weights smooth we're going to change active group to deform pose bones 
and then move the iteration slider while we're watching. Till it looks natural. I mean, you would get a crease when you sit down, but we can still edit that further. So that's um, smoothed out now. So what we're going to do is limit total again and normalize all again. Mesh weights, limit total. Now I've actually added these to my quick menu because I use them such a lot. So to do that, you can right click normalize all for instance, and add to quick favorites. Now I've only got removed from quick favorites because I've already got it added, but you would add to quick favorites. And then thereafter you would press Q and then choose smooth. Oh no, we're normalizing, aren't we? Undo that. Q. And then normalize all. Check deform pose bones and look active is not ticked. Okay. Now say we didn't want that dimple on the tummy. You would go back in and select what is dimpled in X-ray mode. And do Q because mine's on the quick menu. Or mesh weights levels and now we want active group but we want which active group do we want um pelvis so m pelvis And just move this gain until it's going to look correct and then do the next row and so on until till it's right or you can do them all at once if you like rather than row by row but i wanted accuracy And now we've got a slower crease. And you can go on tweaking as you like. Uh, under the armpit, for instance. with X enabled up here and hopefully that would apply to both sides when we smooth it but we'll see so what we're doing the shoulder so M shoulder left right Q smooth don't want 39 levels that's too much 39 iterations three is enough And then Q, limit total, Q, normalize all. And has it applied to the right hand side? No, probably because it's lost its symmetry, but we'll sort that out as well in a minute. 
I'm just going to do that quickly. Okay, so when, when an object has lost its symmetry, you can go to Avastar, or select all first in edit mode, scroll down to toolbox, and then you've got asymmetries, and you press this double arrow here. 626 already symmetrical, 686 pairs mirrored. So now with X, what you do on the left should happen on the right. Let's check the elbow. muscles right so we'll come back with another video on further tweaking to help with animation and I hope that's enough for, to be going on with for now I'll see you then